Good morning. I would like to share some ideas with you today on a topic that is possibly close to the hearts of people in this auditorium. Entrepreneurship and how we as entrepreneurs can nurture and leverage certain mind assets that would make us most effective in whatever we do. First up, it's good to note that entrepreneurs are a bit outside the norm. They are not the usual people. I hope I got the tilt right. Yes. They choose the path of unknown and risky over proven and predictable. By doing so, there are two or three standard deviations from the mean in terms of how people make their choices. They do that because they are driven by a passion. They are driven by a passion to achieve something in their lives that they think are most valuable. They put it on top of their life's priorities. May not be the same for everyone around the world, but for them, that is the most important thing to achieve. And they are willing to make the sacrifices towards that. So the passion drives them and risks are inherent as the journey starts. So, it's good to have some assets. Good to have some assets that will offset the risks and make the journey successful. And these assets can be of two types. Physical assets or mind assets. Physical assets are well understood, very very important. People, products and services, the tools, the financial capital and the facilities to create them. These assets are somewhat dependent on the type of venture and the external environment. The mind assets complement them. They are internal, intrinsic. They build the internal immunity and they are applicable whatever the nature of the venture, whatever the nature of the external world. That's the beauty of the mind assets that you can strengthen it to succeed in any environment. The five mind assets I consider most valuable for entrepreneurs to nurture and build on are first, integrity. Second, the purpose. Team role, effort focus, and finally the points. I would like to spend a couple of minutes on each of these key assets. Integrity. If you think of a normal job and a career as a journey in a paved road where you encounter lots of hurdles from time to time, you visualize an entrepreneurial job as a journey on an unpaved road. It's a reverse and you encounter opportunities instead of hurdles from time to time and you want to maximize on those opportunities. Given this scenario, survival becomes a key instinct for an entrepreneur. Surviving to fight another day. So are the instincts to beat the competition. Make that value or profit. And win at all situations at any cost. The way to look at integrity is that it is above all of this. It is above all of this. It is what you truly are. It is the most, most truthful representation you make of yourselves. And the important thing about integrity is that it builds the trust. Today, people have many, many ways of communicating with each other. Face to face, voice, chats, emails, social media, and so on. But we know after a few initial interactions, trust gets established or not. And the communication is really between the mind to mind of the people. And if the trust is there, the communication is successful. And integrity builds the trust 
and from there you get the courage to make the decisions. Courage to make even the most difficult decisions which are yet correct ones that need to be made. So if you want to walk into this challenge and the battlefield of entrepreneurship, the founding asset on which you want to do that is this one, that is integrity. <coughs> Building on the next one, the purpose. I would like to look at a venture as an open book. It is an open book in which the prologue and maybe a couple of initial chapters are written by the founder, the founding team. But importantly, the successive teams write the succeeding chapters and hopefully a great industrial scholar will write a very successful epilogue. Purpose brings people together. And when purpose is transparent, there is more buy-in. Individual dreams are fine, but individual dreams are also lonely. They are also burdensome. And you want to have the collective dream, the collective purpose. So the purpose is a very well distilled thought that originates the founding team and shared and brought into by all the stakeholders. What is to be achieved and why are those things paramount importance to the company or the enterprise are clear to everyone. I will be bold enough to say if you are starting an enterprise and if you have got the purpose clear and people enjoying and vibing with that purpose, consider the job half done. I know it's a bold statement, but that is the importance of what a collective purpose and a buying can achieve. It is like half done a job. The next asset that closely builds on this purpose and a collective dream is the team role. Here again, it is good to point out a key contrast between a corporate world and a startup world. Because I come from both. In a corporate world, typically, you have more resources for the given work to be done. Typically, you have more resources for the given work to be done. So kind of challenges and conflict come when multiple people are trying to do the same job. In a startup world, it's a converse. There are less resources for the work that needs to get done. So people are going to multiplex. People are going to take multiple avatars to get the job done. And leadership becomes very contextual. You need to allow for the freedom and the leadership to emerge context to context so that maximum delivery of resources can be accomplished. The egos, the titles and the ranks and so on have no role to play. And this is a great asset to not only nurture but also make the culture of the company itself. Team comes first. Only team wins. There are no individual losses or victories. Team wins and context decides who are going to participate and we want to maximize the resources we have. We don't have the luxury of having so much of resources and wondering of seven people who want to do this, who should do it. The fourth asset I want to talk about is counterintuitive to the modern management philosophy. I myself am a product of modern management philosophy, having worked in Texas Instruments. That talks about management objectives, key research areas, Targets, metrics, results, and rewards, which are all good, which are all very, very good. But beyond a certain point, the excessive result focus, which I want to touch upon this as an idea here, is dangerous. The excessive result focus leads to anxiety, leads to pressure, leads to errors. Why? Because we all know. When you put result at the forefront of it, like you see on this graphic here, 
and all the important steps that are needed to get the result slightly under on the back foot. The focus on the effects, the first is last and pressure works. But we know unless and until all these critical steps are executed to the greatest of quality and excellence, results are not going to come. So think of the scenario where you just put things in the reverse. Focus on things which are in our control and must be done well. Right step begets right step. One, two, three, four, five, and ten, and the results will follow. I am a changing person myself in my career, having really spent a lot of efforts and believe into the result-driven management through a combination of effort, effort focus, because I am realizing that this is the philosophy that is going to be ultimately successful in a sustained manner and it's not very different from our Indian philosophy where we ask for actions that are not necessarily affected by the outcome of the results. Actions that are not necessarily even motivated by the what results could be. They take you far along in a much more sustained manner. And finally, the asset of poise, the equilibrium. If I want to quickly bring to the mind of all of you an image to think of this important asset, I may say so, the Mahendra Singh Dhoni kind of quality that we want to have as a key mind asset. Entrepreneurs realize as they go along that there is no single silver bullet to get things done. There is no single key quality that is going to accomplish everything. They need many things, some of them philosophically and the other direction. You need to lead with data. We know that. You also need to lead with feelings. You need to strengthen the flag in the organization. You want to strengthen the methods in the organization, the efficiency. You want to be great in planning, even greater in execution. Important part of a leader and his or her mind asset is this ability to harmonize opposing strengths and make that a real asset for the organization. So we are talking about an inclusion here, not an exclusion. Some of the engineering skills talk about the or, either or scenario. We don't need that. We really want and scenarios. We want A and B and C in order to achieve the overall purpose. And the moments. There are going to be moments that we live from, there are the up moments, and there are going to be a few and or in between. There are going to be okay moments, which are going to be much more than the up moments. And there are going to be even down moments, which are going to be even more than the okay moments. You need the calm. You need a calm sail through the periods because it is not a moment that you set out to do, it is the purpose. It is a dream, it is a collective dream that everyone wants to bring together. So the moments are okay, you have to have the calm to go through these ups and downs. Very importantly, harmonizing, I mentioned possibly strengths in opposing directions and the calm do not mean no decision. I cannot emphasize this enough. It is not about not making decisions because that is not an option. What we want to do as leaders is to make those decisions in a timely manner. But accept the outcome of the decision and learn from them and make better decisions the next time. So we are really looking at a learning cycle that hopefully goes up and up in this process. So this very key asset of poise brings multiple leadership qualities. Harmonizing, having that calm to get through the various periods and importantly being a very good decision maker or a decision making team. So here I put back the mind asset staircase for you. These 
complement the physical assets, as I mentioned, very nicely complement. While the physical asset is somewhat contextual on the type of venture, type of external environment, these assets are intrinsic. These are things we can control. These are things we can make the best regardless of the scenarios and build that internal community. So we walk into this challenge with integrity as a founding mind asset. And we lead with poise throughout the journey. Lead with poise throughout the journey. And during the phase, we nurture and leverage the other three key assets of purpose, team growth, and effort focus. If we can do that nicely, complementing the physical assets, I believe we give ourselves a great chance of being successful in whatever venture enterprise we would like to build. With this, at this time, I must thank IMK and the TEDx organization for the invite to this beautiful city and the beautiful campus to be a part of you today. And I would like to thank all the audience for your kind attention to me today. And thank to also wish the future entrepreneurs here best wishes. Thank you very much.